propane tank wood stove got a couple of additions to it welded on the one on top is a secondary burn combustion chamber the one on the bottom key element just as much as that one is the ashtray slash the air intake this is your typical propane tank uh, i managed to drill some holes grinded out some holes in there for the airflow intake as well as this little guy which is a secondary combustion air intake this allows me to regulate the temperature from uh, from uh, close to gradually fully open position and that's what allows you to burn the flame one more time which burns ridiculously hot so the tube goes up and around preheats the fresh air intake and then comes right back into the propane tank at its highest point so the flames that are burning inside uh, ending up burning I don't know if you can see it on the video but uh, that tube right there that's a continuation of uh, the same tubing it's got a couple of well several little holes drilled in it that feeds it fresh oxygen to allow the flames burn one more time before they escape into here and out the chimney uh, inside that's where the uh, flame goes out and travels through so basically if you took a crosscut section of it inside there that's where the opening is to let the combustible air go into this tube go that way and then straight up so that makes the top plate ridiculously hot uh, this is big enough for a 12 inch frying pan um, you can cook anything you want on it it gets crazy crazy hot much hotter than your typical uh, stove that you have inside the house and uh, once you light her up the door basically stays closed all the time this lets you control the air intake for the main combustion as well as emptying the ashes so whatever that burns inside simply falls into here and it acts as a scoop and it acts and it acts as a air intake so when it's burning you basically close it almost completely i like to leave about a quarter of an inch maybe with an eighth of an inch gap for main intake so that the uh, wood inside which is typically quite thick is uh, going to burn for hours and hours without you having to do anything to it uh, the chimney is very light steel okay it's basically a drainage pipe from the gutters doesn't need to be anything anything fancy anything heavy duty but uh, this steel this is three millimeter eighth of an inch cheapest steel you can get propane tank same three millimeter steel and just a really light gauge ashtray itself all it needs to do is be able to scoop out the ashes and control the airflow that is it so super easy to make ridiculously efficient burns for hours heats hits the deck hits the patio and um, more importantly hits my trailer that i go camping with we're going to show you what it looks like lit up everybody knows the drier the wood the easier to start lighting it okay once you get it lit and get it going and you got some uh, some nice red coals in this thing it's actually best to uh, stuff it all the way to the top with something very thick maybe like as thick as an arm uh, this piece of wood is 
basically a little bit thicker than my arm. It's heavy, it's not that dry. The wetter the wood, the longer it will burn in there. So once you get the coals, you stuff it with something like this, short and bulky all the way to the roof, close the door, and you're gonna have hours and hours of amazing heat, amazing performance. And if you happen to, get, to be camping, you can actually go ahead and go to sleep, uh, close the door, okay? This intake, while it's heating up, I like to leave it fairly open. Once it gets going, you can literally almost close it, just leave about an eighth of an inch, maybe a quarter, no more than that. And uh, that will make sure that the fire lasts there for at least four to six hours, depends on uh, depends on the wood and how thick it is that you put in there. So no sparks flying out. Now, when I made this thing, if you notice on the door, I don't have any fancy gaskets, none of that stuff. I did clip on a little bit of skinnier steel steel uh, just to make sure that when i do close it it sits relatively tight but it, i mean it's not a hundred percent tight more than enough to keep it going a little bit of glass here would be nice to see what's happening but uh, i don't have it so uh but the smoke regardless of these little holes it never comes back through just because of the suction that it creates that just goes right out the chimney so even if you have gaps, even if you don't have gaskets, even if you leave the door open a little bit, as you can see, the flame, it just goes right inside the stove and never comes back out. Okay. Well, it's been about five minutes or less of burning time since we lit it. That's what's happening inside. I've never touched it. My vent is opened maybe an inch out. And uh, the interesting thing is the uh, smoke that's coming out. You cannot really even see it much on the camera because it's so bloody clear, okay? And that has a lot to do with the secondary combustion chamber that's in here, which is basically letting uh, the smoke that's inside burn off enough to uh, not produce any smoke. It's, it's very, very... Uh, green okay it's good for environment uh, it doesn't produce any of the uh, toxic things or I'm just trying to find a better angle to see it against the background or anything like that to see that the smoke is very very clear it's not your typical ordinary wood stove that burns black this one burns very clear very environmentally friendly which is a key to me and perhaps hopefully a lot of other people out there so after about five minutes of burning just to give you an idea how hot the top surface is i'm gonna spill a little bit of water on it it's quite hot it kind of evaporates but doesn't really try to roll off yet another five minutes you're gonna see it a little bit differently so it's only been about another two more minutes uh, as you can see the flames are just nice in there they're so hot they're trying to spit outside so we can go ahead and close this thing like i said eighth of an inch three sixteenths whatever you want to call it it's just perfect how hot did the top get it's only been it's only been literally maybe six seven minutes since i lit her up this is just plain water like this thing is so hot it literally rolls everywhere off to the side so by the time the whole thing absorbs the heat just because it's such a thick steel relatively speaking three millimeter it holds the heat incredibly well so that bacon and eggs in the morning when you wake up camping can be extremely delicious cooking on this thing without any smoke interference 
So we got this firewood stove burning for about 15 minutes now. For those of you really curious people, uh, this is the FLIR firm imaging camera that basically shows you uh, what the surrounding temperatures are and so on and so forth. So the uh, circle in the center represents the temperature you're gonna see in the top left corner. As you can see the uh, the grass and the ground and uh, whatever the surroundings are outside, they are uh, only about six degrees Celsius. Okay, everything here is in Celsius. Us in Canada, we're using a metric system. So here we go to the wood stove. Uh, the actual temperature where it needs to be is so hot it doesn't register. It's over 280 degrees Celsius. I honestly don't know how much hotter that is, but it's pretty damn hot. The uh, air intake is uh, also quite nice and hot. Okay. And then this cape chamber that the air comes out through progressively becomes cooler. So you basically have uh, close to 200 degrees Celsius in the intake of the actual chimney. Okay. And uh, as you climb up on the chimney, it progressively gets colder, colder, and colder. And all the way down to the escape route, which is uh, only only about 50 degrees Celsius. The rest over there that you see kind of a little bit hotter is the actual smoke exhaust itself. So if you had a roof in there of some sort, it's not going to get burnt. To give an idea how high this thing is, uh, the very top of this chimney right there okay is a little over six feet in height maybe six and a half feet so for most camping trailers more than adequate in height to make sure you don't burn a hole in your ceiling but keep yourself quite comfortable even in the coldest winters uh, that canada has to offer to give an idea how how efficient this thing is in winter okay uh, i had it going for the first time in my camping trailer by the way just to uh, point out the uh, temperature underneath directly below the uh, wood stove is just close to 90 degrees celsius okay some areas a little bit higher but uh is just under 90 100 degrees celsius so if you're going to be burning it for a long time i suggest you uh maybe put something that is not that temperature sensitive like a piece of wood or maybe a steel plate but anyway uh in my trailer i don't have either one of those things just because i never really burn it that hot i tend to close that uh, intake a little bit more so minus 35 last year in january minus 35 degrees celsius outside i had this thing going i had literally every window open in my trailer and i was sitting there and pretty much nothing but the t-shirt and underwear and i was almost sweating so it generates an incredible amount of heat uh, especially in a closed environment and it doesn't contaminate the air with smoke so very practical if you're going to go camping for a long time you might run out of propane you're probably never going to run out of pieces of wood simply laying around like that to feed it